You're listening to the Greeks Gridiron live with Ethan Haristadulu. Good afternoon, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to another edition of the Greeks Gridiron. I am Ethan Haristadulu. It is Thursday, as always. We got Thursday night football to kick off week number four in the NFL. We got ourselves the Jaguars and the Bengals squaring off this week. Um, and you know what? Despite the fact that it, they might not be two of the like sexier teams, this is a game that, in my opinion, has some intrigue to it because you have a team that's two and one in the Bengals who just are coming off a massive, you know, kind of like shut down victory over the Steelers. I don't want to say shut out, but a shut down type of victory. And then you have a team like the Jaguars that they're kind of struggling to find their identity and figure things out with their rookie quarterback and a new head coach. So there is some stuff to take away from this game. And at the end of the day, it's football. I love me some football. So let's talk about it. And remember, Remember, if you enjoy what we're doing here, as always, like, comment down below. If you're a Bengals fan or Jaguars fan, get in on this conversation. Let me know what you guys think about this game coming up tonight. And then also subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on all the content that we'll keep pushing out as we truck through the year. Now, let's talk about the game at hand, shall we? We have ourselves the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Cincinnati Bengals. They are at Cincy. Uh, the tale of the tape on this one reads basically as this. You have a defense that is looking pretty strong over in Cincinnati, a surprisingly good defensive unit in my opinion. They did bring in some key pieces there to kind of fortify things on the defensive side of the football, and it has paid off over in Cincy. And then you have a defense on the Jacksonville Jaguars side that – does not really do much well, except their run defense has been somewhat impressive. They let up 160 yards against the Texans week one. However, holding the Cardinals to 91 yards and the Broncos to 96 yards, they've done a pretty decent job against a couple of teams that have, I don't want to say great running games, but solid running games, and they were able to hold their own in that asset. Now, when we kind of pair these two teams up, we look at the tail of the tape here. The big thing that really stands out to me is, again, that run defense that Jacksonville has. Everything else in the defense is pretty much bottom of the league. They're sitting at like 28th, 29th. Nothing really too much to like, you know, worry about as far as an offense goes, especially one like the Bengals that's been doing pretty solid. Now, when you look at things here, how this matches up, the Bengals are actually ranked 17th in rushing yards per game. They're sitting at about 104.7, I believe is the number, yet 104.7 while Jacksonville's allowing about 115.7. Now, when you think about that, they're both to, they're both actually 17th in the league, so this actually pairs up pretty nicely. Now, when you think about what Jacksonville did against Houston, Houston got a really big lead really quickly, and then they just kind of pounded the rock the second half, you know, just to basically end the game out. So running yardage, a little bit inflated, especially, you know, a team that's defeated week one, you're getting blown out, things are not going to go your way, defense kind of lets up a little bit. When you look at the last couple of weeks, they've held both of their opponents under 100 yards. They're averaging, it's like 93 the last couple of games. I don't want to sit here and write home about the Bengals' running game. They do have Joe Mixon, really good running back. He did have, what was it? Uh, I believe he had, I have it written down over here. He had 90 yards versus the Steelers off of 18 carries, so he averaged about five per carry. However, that was against a 10th ranked Steelers run defense, and this is not the Steelers 10th ranked run defense. I don't know whether Mixon's going to be able to cross that hundred yard mark or not, or whether the Bengals offense as a whole is going to be able to cross that hundred yard mark. It seems like Joe Mixon is doing the majority of the carrying with the football there. I believe the other running back that's on their team only had one yard and it was for like negative one yards as well. Then Burrow had like seven off of five carries. So We'll have to keep an eye on that. That is something that actually has been brought up from the Jaguars side is can they actually stop this run? Edge rusher Josh Allen came out and even said their main focus for this game is to stop the run, which makes sense because you stop the run, you make you force the defense to, to you know, they, they, they start running the ball less. You don't have to stack the box as much. The defense can be a little bit more dishonest about what they're doing, especially if you really start to frustrate the running game on the offensive side of the football. Uh, we'll have to see how this shakes out for them, but that's probably my first big question going into this game is can the Jaguars defense be able to do anything? And if it is anything, are they going to be able to stop that run like they're planning to? Uh, I hope so. The Jaguars defense has not done great. If there's one bright spot for that unit, it is the running defense surprisingly to me. And I'm a Colts fan. I kind of keep tabs on what's going on, but I did not realize that the, or what's going on in the a a AFC South, excuse me. Um, but it is surprising to see them do so well against the running game. Now, everything else, 
28th for points allowed, 28th in passing yards allowed, and then 29th in total yards. They're sitting at 418 yards a game right now, and that's not a good number. Now, with that in mind, that does kind of work in the Bengals' favor offensively. With everything else being so far down, they're bottom in pretty much every other category or close to the bottom at that. An offense that has only averaged about 213 yards a game in the Bengals' offense could take advantage of this. Um, I have a pretty bold prediction for Joe Burrow that we'll go over in a little bit towards the later half of this podcast for you guys, but that is something to keep an eye on. The Bengals' offense has not been stellar, but it has been good, and it's been good when it needs to be. They've only forced 17th in the league at 22.7 points a game. Their running offense is, again, that 104 that we mentioned. Passing is only 213. They're actually ranked 28th in that. And then total yards, they're ranked 28th as well. So this is not an offense that's necessarily lighting up the statistics boards, but they are doing things efficiently. And it's the defense that they really shine at. You know, they're only allowing 18 points a game, which is 6th in the league. Passing, they're only allowing 238 yards. That's 14th. And then 8th for running is 78 yards. Total yards, 317. That's 8th as well. This Jaguars offense probably going to struggle unless, to my second key point to keep an eye on during this game, uh, ends up really kind of affecting how things go. It turns out that the Bengals are going to be missing some key players on offense and on defense. Free safety Jesse Bates, he's ruled out. That's a hit to the secondary. Chidobi Awuziwe, if I'm pronouncing that correctly or incorrectly, let me know in the comments section down below, please, Bengals fans, is doubtful for Thursday night football, and that's as of when I'm recording this, which is Wednesday night prior to the uh, the following day when the game actually is. Whether he ends up getting downgraded to out or by some miracle he ends up playing, but, I mean, doubtful the night before does not sound good for him. Two hits to the secondary. Can the Jacksonville Jaguars take advantage of that? Can Trevor Lawrence take advantage of that? This is a good opportunity for him to, you know, he's going up against some, a couple of backups in the secondary. And when you're missing a, a leader like Jesse Bates, you're going to notice that. Jesse Bates is one of the best safeties in the league. I picked him as one of the top five safeties in the league heading into this season. So that is a definite big blow and probably one of the best pieces on this defense. And it, uh, the way I see it, if Jacksonville is going to have a game to really, you know, light it up through the air, this would be a good opportunity to do so, so long as that Bengals pass rush isn't eating them alive. Now, on the offensive side of things for the Bengals, they are missing T. Higgins as well. So you're missing a couple of guys in the secondary, and then you're missing a key wide receiver on the offensive side of the football, and then you have a solid run defense against what has been a, it's like a pretty even matchup run defense versus run offense wise for the Jacksonville Jaguars to the Bengals there respectively. The Jacksonville Jaguars have a glimmer of hope. Am I going to pick them to win? We'll talk about that in a second. But there is some upside for Jacksonville here, especially you know, especially with these injuries. There is a possibility that there you know there might be an upset in the balance here. I'm not going to call that because I don't know. But I mean, I don't want to sit here and just you know write off Jacksonville as this is a walk off three and one type deal for the Bengals here. There are some key injuries that we need to keep an eye on, and that's probably one of the bigger things I'm going to be watching. Can they stop the run, as in Jacksonville? And then on top of that, can the Bengals deal with the injuries that they're missing at some of these key positions? Now, my last little thing to note about the game itself, and I thought this was a pretty interesting little tidbit I picked up reading some of the articles from the Bengals and the Jaguars websites, and something that I don't think a lot of people know going into this game, and I didn't even know, Trevor Lawrence has an opportunity here to extend a streak that has been going on for four years now in Cincinnati, and it's not a good one. Apparently... Since 2017, when Mitch Trubisky debuted in the NFL and went up against the Cincinnati Bengals himself, the Bengals are 0-7 against rookie quarterbacks. I'm not saying that means anything, but that is a little bit of an interesting thing to note. This is a better defense than Cincinnati has seen in quite some time, but... The Bengals have lost seven straight games to rookies since Mitchell Trubisky, of all people, beat them back in 2017. So Trevor Lawrence has the opportunity to be the eighth straight rookie quarterback. Again, I'm not saying it means anything. I just think that that's a pretty funny thing to note and something to keep an eye on and see if Trevor Lawrence can maybe keep that streak alive. This game heavily favors the Bengals, and I will not front and lie about that. It really does. But there are some things here and there that just make you wonder, whew, is this going to be an upset type of game? I don't know, but that is something hanging over the Bengals, and it's obviously something that's 
prominent enough that the Bengals know about it. One of their writers from their website were talking about it. That's where I got the <laughs> where I got the little piece of info from. I'm curious to see if something like that plays any sort of mental game for Cincinnati. Probably not, but it's in the back of somebody's mind, I'm sure. Now, let's talk about predictions. We'll go over all the big stuff. So before I give you my final game score and whatnot, who I think is going to win, um, I do have a couple of bold predictions to throw out. We just went into discussion a lot about the Bengals' defense and how dominant it has been so far this year. They're in the top 10 in a lot of significant categories. And then on top of that, the Jaguars' offense is really struggling this year. And I mean, in all pretty much all facets of the game. I'm going to go with a bold prediction for the Bengals here. I'm going to hit Joe Burrow for 325 yards plus and then two TDs or more. And that's probably going to be through the air. I don't expect Joe Burrow to have a rushing touchdown. And of course, I'm saying this and he'll probably end up having one. But I'm going to peg him for two touchdowns passing. So 325 yards through the air, two touchdowns passing for Joe Burrow. That is my Bengals bold prediction. Now, for the Jaguars... This is going to be kind of like a negative bold prediction for them, but I have a feeling that, you know, we talked at length about these injuries. I think that the Bengals should be able to overcome them, though. They have been a very good unit so far this year, um, but I might be shooting myself in the foot with this one here. I'm going to pick the Jaguars to not reach 300 yards of total offense this game. I just don't know if... There is a lot going on in Jacksonville, and man, do I feel for Jaguars fans. Like I mentioned, I am a Colts fan, so I understand. Uh, you know, I, I keep a closer eye on the AFC South than anything else. I see what's going on over in Jacksonville. There's a lot to, you know, there's things to be hopeful for in the future. This is going to be a tough year for Jacksonville. It's a tough year for us. Hell, who am I kidding? We're both 0-3. When I, <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, there's just a lot that has going to, that's going to have to change going through the next year or two for Jacksonville for them to get better. And I just feel like the offense right now, the way it is, is really struggling and going up against, you know, a Bengals defense that is again, top 10 in just about every single major category rushing aside. Uh, I just have a hard time believing in the Jaguars. This game could be totally wrong about that, but I'm going to pick them for not reaching 300 yards. So they're looking at 299 or less for that game. Now for the final score and who I'm picking on the game, uh, I don't really think this is much of a surprise to anyone who's made it this far and is listening, but I am going to pick Cincinnati to win the game. I'm going to pick them to win a score of 31 to 16. Again, I think this is a really good game for the Bengals offensively um, going up against a defense that has really struggled. You know, I think that, you know, Joe Burrow is going to have an opportunity to really take advantage of the weak secondary and just how poor they've been against the pass. Whether the run becomes like, you know, whether the run gets stuffed or not, I guess you, again, you have the 17th ranked rushing offense and the 17th ranked uh, run defense going up against each other. Well, I just kind of have to see who gives first on that one there, but I do favor the Bengals in this one. And I am taking the over. If you do not follow gambling or anything like that, I don't really either, but I have been getting into it and just kind of like basing it off of what I think. And again, this is not gambling advice. I've been saying this the last few weeks. I am going to take the over. It was sitting at 46 the last time I looked. And again, this is Wednesday night the day prior to the actual game itself that may swing up or down. I'll take the over regardless. I think that the Bengals are going to be able to put up plenty of points. And while I think the offense in Jacksonville is going to struggle, I think that they'll be able to get up. The, I, I think 16 points, maybe even to 20, 22, 23 is definitely something doable for Jacksonville. But that is my preview for Thursday night. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below with my Bengals and Jaguars fans, especially what did I get right and wrong? What are you looking forward to? Anything you have your eyes set on for this game? But I will catch you guys on Sunday for our game day preview, going over everything that's you know important to keep an eye on for Sunday. Have a good rest of your Thursday night. Enjoy some football, and I'll see you Sunday.